sir, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear from the testimony about to give this matter the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And you heard the three that your attorney placed on the record, correct? Yes. As to the allegation you tested positive for alcohol on August 8th, how do you plead? Guilty. You've gone over your advice of rights for probation violation purposes, correct? Yes, Your Honor. And you understood all of those rights? Yes, Your Honor. You also understand the possible penalty as a result of your plea? Yes, Your Honor. The recommendation is for you to continue to complete our terms of probation, revoke under advisement status, pay a $50 probation violation fee, attend outpatient, and 30 days on the alcohol tether. Yes. You understand that's only a recommendation. This court does not have to follow that recommendation in full. We only follow it in part or otherwise. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You also understand that by entering into a plea, you'll be waiving your right to having a contested hearing. Yes, Your Honor. And despite and knowing all that, you still want to continue with your plea? Yes. And you already promised you anything, threatened you, or coerced you in any way for you to enter into a plea? No. Counsel, you can please go to your client. Yes, I'd like to direct your attention to August 8th, 2023. As ordered by probation, did you um, submit yourself to a test for drugs and alcohol? Yes. And on that date, did it indicate the use of alcohol? Yes. Satisfied, Your Honor. The court is also satisfied the plea is knowing, voluntary, and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea to the probation violation. Indicate technical violation number two. And counsel asks for the recommendation. Your Honor, I respect the request to be adopted. I had a need a conversation with my client as to the use of the alcohol. He indicated, and uh, he did show me a variety of different medicines that he was taking. Uh, that didn't affect the alcohol in it, but I told him that it does not matter whether he had alcohol on purpose, on accident, through medicine, or through a beer. It, these tests are designed to reflect whether sobriety is being uh, maintained. Uh, I saw the terms and conditions. I believe they are appropriate. Obviously, going forward, he understands that any sort of violations, no matter what the reason, could have strict and not harsher consequences. Based on that uh, recommendation, Judge, I'd ask that the take the solution is adopted by the court. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Sir, on the date of your offense, you have consumed quite a bit of alcohol. Yes, Your Honor. And as a condition of your probation, this court indicated for you not to use any alcohol. Yes. Did you think that, that, that I wasn't serious? Oh, I understand, but I know that the date that uh, I felt the second violation, I was taking medication around that time. What medication? Well, I was um, burnt at work, uh, third degree burns. I was taking a uh, cream bag, a uh, silver sulfate cream that contained alcohol in it. I had allergy problems. I was taking Benadryl and NyQuil around that time, too. Did you notify your probation officer at any point, sir, regarding your medication that you began taking? No, Your Honor, I didn't think that I had to afford like, a like, cough medicine or. Yes, sir. You need to notify your probation officer anytime you begin any medication. This is not your second alcohol, your second alcohol violation of probation. Yes. Your last one, you just pled guilty July 24th. And then two weeks later, you're testing positive again for alcohol. Right. And so do you have your prescription cream? Uh, I don't have it like, with me, but it's at home. What is the name of the cream? The silver sulfate. Silver sulfate? Yes. And Judge, it does a little bit of sterile alcohol in it. But again, we're not having a hearing in which we're contesting uh, that was due to medicine, it was due to, it, it was a violation. He understands the ramifications. Uh, it's really you know, why we're not trying to push beyond the hearing uh, because at the end of the day, it was the result that ultimately brought him here for the violation. But he did show me the uh, medicine that did have alcohol in it, but it's irrelevant for the purposes of uh, today's proceeding. 
Well, and I can appreciate that, Council. However, the concern this court has is that this is now your client's second alcohol-related violation. Just two weeks after the last time this court um, accepted your client's plea of guilty, and his initial his initial charge was based upon his intoxication. And so I have serious concerns that your client cannot use alcohol. Sir, do you um, have seasonal allergies? Well, it was just a, a cold that like my kids were sick. And so you said you had allergies. Yeah, like I was taking like allergy medicines, like in the morning, like Benadryl, like set my nose. In the event you don't think that I'm serious, if you have any other violation, it's mandatory jail. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Medicine, topical cream, anything. It's mandatory jail. If for some reason you have something prescribed to you, then you need to submit that to probation. And if you read your entire documents, all of your documents that you receive from probation, you will see that you cannot use any medication that contains alcohol. If you're prescribed something that contains alcohol, you must provide that to probation. That's right. So I'm going to indicate that you're continuing to complete all terms of probation. We're revoking your under advisement status, $50 probation violation fee, 30 days on the alcohol tether, you're to attend outpatient treatment. The court's going to also indicate 10 days jail. I'm going to suspend that with the jail review. If you're tested today, sir, what's in your system? Nothing, Your Honor. The jail review will be October 10th. Get an idea. You have that alcohol tether today. Any questions? No, Your Honor. Please, please go see probation, and somebody will be with you shortly, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Have a good day. Are you here for Mr. Nunez? I am here. Yeah. Right, we have everybody here. Hi, Mr. Molino. Hi, Judge. Okay, so let's go on the record in the matter of the state of Michigan versus Victor Nunez, 23984. Yeah. And um, okay. Detective, if you can please state your name for the record, please. Detective Chelsea Hatch. All right, please raise your right hand. You saw me swear or from the testimony about to give this man to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. All right, thank you. You may proceed on the warrant. Um, I was just oh, I'm sorry. Like, the warrant's already been signed. Yeah. I apologize. Okay. And so, uh, Mr. Molino, sorry, your appearance, please. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Matt Molino, on behalf of Victor Nunez, is appearing over Zoom. And uh, I am appearing on this case as a retained attorney. I'm sorry, and I. I appreciate the court's patience waiting for me. No worries, no worries, but do you want to step over that way so your client can see you? Sure, sure. All right. Um, all right. So, Mr. Nunez, your name for the record, please. Victor Nunez. Okay. And you have heard from your, you can hear your attorney, correct? Yes, yes, I can. And you can also see your attorney, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so, counsel, as to the arraignment, uh, we will stand mute, Your Honor, and wait for formal reading. Court will wait, wait the formal reading. Sorry, just one moment. Yeah. 
Okay, and so you do have the right to have an attorney. You cannot afford one. The court will appoint one to represent you. In fact, you've availed yourself of your right to an attorney and you've retained counsel, correct? Yes, ma'am. You also have the right to be presumed innocent, self proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to have a trial by a judge or by a jury. And you also have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing may be used against you in court. Yes, you understand all those rights, sir? Yes, ma'am. The court's going to enter plea of not guilty and you may have scheduled this matter for probable cause conference on September 14th at 8.40 a.m. And counsel asked to bond, and then I will hear from Detective Haskin. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, you know, Mr. Nunez lives across the street from me. I've known him for several years. Uh, he's a personal friend. Um, I have to say, rarely would I say this, but, um, you know, we've actually known about this case for a little bit. He was saving up money to walk himself in, but he knew his bond uh, potentially for this type it was rather high, so he needed some money. Um, as it turns out, you know, they, they went and picked him up. Uh, he turned himself in willingly, totally cooperative, um, retained me, retained me on this case for several months already. Um, I think Mr. Nunez is one of those defendants who appears pretty bad on paper because he's a, obviously it's a fourth type of bit. Uh, about 10, 12 years ago, he got involved in a identity theft uh, situation. He had two convictions based on that. Actually, I think he had three, but it's mostly concerning the same amount of time. He did all his probation. He paid all his restitution, really turned his life around. He works at the Dollar General. I mean, he's not a flight risk. The, the man walks to walks to work, walks home. You know, we tried to negotiate not having any charges in this case. He just couldn't raise the money uh, to potentially pay the, the victim back because we weren't even going to submit on this or the police department. And I just couldn't get the money together. Uh, so I said all that to say, you know, I think this is a, a case where maybe the paper doesn't fit the actual person. He's a good guy um, and he can't afford to lose his job. So I'm asking that he, the court, you know, consider a lower bond. I know they're going to ask for $25,000 with the tether. There's no way he can afford that. That's essentially a man and he would lose his job. Um, I like having him around. He's a great neighbor. And a really great guy. So I'm just going to ask the court to consider a closer Okay. All right. And Mr. Your Honor, due to um, the charges, the seriousness of the charges, as well as Nunez's criminal history, he has several felonies on his criminal history. Um, and the fact that he had to be arrested and brought here on his warrant. Um, I have concerns that he will not come back to court after this, so I'm requesting $25,000 cash bond with the GPS other. Okay. And so, Mr. Nunez, you work at the Hello General? Yes, I do, ma'am. And you were hired given your criminal history? My, yes, ma'am, I was. I did ask my background check, everything. Before that, I was at Amazon, but I, I lost that job, I lost my cars, couldn't afford to pay them, you know. We have a lot of things been happening in our family, so, but I still have to, you know, I'm working and I managed to keep my head above water. I just want to get this taken care of. I don't want to lose the job. I'm not a flight risk. I've known about this for a year, have not flown, have not gone anywhere, will not go anywhere. I just want to get it taken care of. When I was on probation, I didn't run. I took care of that. I met all my responsibilities. And I, I just stupidity. I'm 60 years old and I've made a stupid mistake and I'm willing to pay for that. I'm just, you know. Uh, uh, okay. So, Mr. Nunez, okay, let me just indicate that part of the, part of the per one of the purposes of bond, okay, there's multiple purposes of bond. One of them is to protect the public, right? right? And this is now your third type of offense with the same charge. And yet, while that's great, 
Yeah, you've been, uh, you've completed everything on probation, you haven't run, you've shown up for everything. You, quite frankly, uh, it appears as though um, the rehabilitative goals were not met while you're on probation. Doesn't seem like it, ma'am, but it has it has been. I just I just I don't even I don't even know the words or, or what to say to be completely frank, but I do I do a lot of good things for my community and I just I it was something that was just what is it you do for your community that you're indicating that you do? I just I mean I, I believe I'm a good person. I don't, you know, I don't you know, people, I try to talk to the kids, you know, as far as all the stuff that's going on with the sex trafficking, that kind of stuff. You know, anybody that comes into my store that's a young person, I try to talk to them. I just, I, I think I just, talk, I, I just. Back, back up, hold on, back up for a moment. You talk to young people about sex trafficking? Because I saw that movie that, that um, what was it called? Um, and it just, it just, you see a lot of kids running around the streets. You know, not doing anything and by themselves. I'm like, hey, are you everything okay? I just talk to people. I make sure that they understand things are bad. Things are bad right now. Just I can add, hey, 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 Victor, I got, I got it. I know what you're talking about. So, yeah. the Oviani family, which we're well aware of, Victor Nunez is Jack Oviani's step yeah. And they become born again Christians. They're really into their church right now, They're really into. And as you know, that movie Sound of Freedom uh, is a new movie that's come out uh, and it's a very popular in the Christian community. They're very concerned with sex trafficking and what's going on. So I think that's where that's coming from. He's trying to be a good citizen of more than sex trafficking. Uh, I, don't, I think it came out pretty bad. <laughs> but I will say this. There's there's two there's two purposes of it. One is uh, to avoid flight risk, that's what the cost of bond is for, and the conditions of bond are, are to protect the community of Michigan Supreme Court said so. Uh, I don't think he's actually dangerous to the community. Uh, and if so, we can put conditions on knowing, uh, you know, a tether, something along those lines. All right, we are going back on the record in the matter of Curtis Carson. Okay, and so, <clears throat> Mr. Mopal, you had an opportunity to speak to Mr. Carson regarding the most recent violation for failing to appear for drug testing on August 29th, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, okay. And so, what is, um, what's happening? You, know, well, you indicated that on the first two violations, August 8th and the July 25th, that those two, those, that that's not going to be hearing on those matters, correct? That's correct. Okay. What about on August 20th? I said he's not going to be because he's going to plead. Correct. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. And he will we, he will plead on this new, new violation with an explanation. Okay. So Mr. Carson, please raise your right hand. Do you sound this far from the testimony about to give this man be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Yeah, sir, you heard the violations, correct? Yes. As to the allegation <clears throat> that you tested positive for alcohol and marijuana on July 25th in violation of your probation, how do you plead? I plead guilty to dropping dirty for the marijuana. I really am not sure about the alcohol thing. Um, I don't recall. I don't recall no no any alcohol being present, but um, I'm I'm admitted to the marijuana. Your Honor, I think what he's saying is that, and because we went over this, I've looked at the uh, reports, and there is a slight amount of content of alcohol. In fact, I even spoke with uh, Ms. Woods on the 29th. Regarding that, says what we were trying to figure out was the alcohol content. Regarding this, is when they test for this amount and then it tests further. Uh, what I believe, and he's admitted. And it has been, and I guess always, always has admitted that he violated the terms of condition probation with respect to the marijuana, but it has no independent recollection of ever consuming. Anyway, Council, 
I understand, John. You indicated last time that the lab was not going to be necessary. I agree. But this sounds as though it is necessary. I've explained to him what he has to do. Again, he, he, he did uh, explain to me, he showed me the results and it said something like 500 milligrams of some word I've never heard of, but it's equivalent to, it's equivalent to uh, whatever, alcohol, um, what is that called? What is, where they, uh, I, I don't know the scientific terms for it, but um, basically if it's a possibility that I have, may have had like an alcohol, um, was that that part or yeah, like uh, something where it have might have had alcohol in it? We are not contesting the results, Sean. Okay, and, so then I need to know: Are you? He, cl he clarified that he was that he was pleading guilty to the positive marijuana, but not the alcohol, and that's one violation. So I need to know: Is he pleading guilty to that? Your Honor, I'm, I'm pleading guilty. Right. I, I, I'm trying to take responsibility for everything that, that I'm guilty of. And the not reporting, and I had the accident right at, right after, uh, right in the same week of sentence. Okay, hold on, sir. Hold on. May I, I need well, no. First, I need to establish whether or not I need to say I need to establish the plea first. So I'm guilty for the week. Okay, the one violation is positive for alcohol and marijuana, July twenty fifth. Correct. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Okay. But your honor, as to this the, is the problem. He's not going, he doesn't remember any alcohol. He okay, is, that, that would go to the allocution and, and all that sort of stuff, but all right. I need to establish the plea first. That's fine. Okay, so then the allegation on August 8th, you failed to appear for drug testing. Guilty or not guilty? I'm guilty for that. As to the allegation that you failed to appear for drug testing on August 29th, guilty or not guilty? I am guilty for that. That was the day of court. Okay. It was. Well, I was not aware of that. I was supposed to leave here and go to. Hold on, you're hold on, sir. You're going to the allocution portion of it, okay? Sir, so you signed your advice of rights form for probation violation, correct? Yes. And you understood all of those rights. Yes. You also understand by entering into a plea, you'll be waiving some of those rights, specifically your right to a contested violation hearing. Yes. You also understand the possible penalty as a result of your plea. Yes. Specifically, the recommendation is for you to continue to complete alternative information, pay a $50 probation violation fee on each matter, five days jail on the first violations from July 25th and August 8th, an additional 10 days on the August 29th violation, in addition to the recommendation for you to serve your 45 days from the jail, your 45 days from the jail review. You understand that's a recommendation. Yeah. You also understand that that's a recommendation and I don't have to follow that in whole or in part or at all. Yeah. You also understand that I could follow it in whole yeah. or in part. Yes. Okay. And knowing all that, do you still want to continue with your plea? Yes. Has anybody promised or anything, threatened you or coerced you in any way for you to enter into a plea? No. All right. And counsel, if you can please bar to your client. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Carson, back on, I'm sorry, you were uh, sentenced to a uh, driving offense for some time ago, correct? Correct. And part of those uh, conditions were to attend drug testing as well as to refrain from marijuana or alcohol, is that correct? Yes. And on uh, December, I'm sorry. August 29th of 2023, did you fail to appear for a drug test? Yes. There, uh, yes. Yes. yes I, I, okay. I was not aware of that. I, I understand that, but you failed to appear. Yes. yes. I'm sorry. And on August, I'm sorry, on August 8th of 2023, did you uh, fail to appear for a drug test? Yes. And on July 25th, 2023, did you, prior to that date, consume some sort of marijuana? Yes. And did you test positive for marijuana? Yes. You recall uh, consuming alcohol prior to that? No, I don't know. That's a satisfied term. All right. <clears throat> 
which also satisfied the plea of knowing volunteering factually accurate as to all the violations. And counsel? Your Honor, I think that I guess we can address the latest one because we were prepared to come in here this morning and to plead violation of the alcohol to the marijuana, which we've always addressed, as well as to the failing to appear. He was well aware of what was going on. He knew what the recommendations were. He sat here all day, which nobody's fault. I'm not saying that. And the court then adjourned proceedings until today's date. Mr. I know that Mr. Carson wants to make a statement on what he's been going through. He is trying to get everything turned around. He knew, obviously, there was a problem with the marijuana. And I think that he wants to address that issue. Because of an accident that he was involved in, he's kind of really hasn't been following everything with a clear mind. Yes, Your Honor. I was asked for consideration of everything that I've been through. I can't understand what you're saying, sir. I was asked for consideration from the court for everything that I've been through in the last, I don't know, almost two months. Same week of sentencing, I had an accident that took me a while to recover from. I'm still dealing with the pain. I didn't even realize that. I had to take my respirator cuff because I was waiting for all these injuries to recover. And, you know, losing my job. I gained so much weight from truck driving. I was really in a depressed state. I'm 100 pounds heavier than I was when I started driving. So I literally have to teach myself how to move again because I've never been this heavy before. It's heavy on my back. I'm taking pain medication and muscle relaxers. I'm currently going through that because that's the process that I have to go through in order to be eligible for this physical therapy because I had to do regular. And it's just, I don't want to use that as an excuse, but I literally, there was a period of time where I really couldn't move. I had to sit with my arm above my heart. And I knew that I had a responsibility to take care of, but I just was not literally moving out of the bed. I was like a vegetable for the first few weeks after the accident. And the day, the day of sentencing, I came in here with a hoodie on so I could hide and move. I didn't want to be dramatic about it. But all that just happened like boom, like all at once. And I didn't even know that when I was getting sentenced that I was facing jail or probation until the day of sentencing. What do you mean you didn't know that? Well, I didn't know that you can go to jail for your first DUI. So you read your advice of rights, correct? I mean, like. You read your advice of rights at the time that you entered the plea. Is that correct? The day of the sentencing? No. When you entered your plea to the amended charge of operating while visibly impaired. Yes. Right. You read your advice of rights for that. Yes. And on that advice of rights form, it tells you that you are in court for a misdemeanor charge. And that the maximum penalty is up to 93 days in jail. And or a $500 fine. Yes. And usually when they say. Hold on, sir. Hold on. So you knew that that was an option. Technically, yes. Okay. So whether what some courts do, what other courts do. You knew that jail was an option. Yes. Okay. All right. You may continue. So, yeah, with everything that, you know, happening, I haven't been, I haven't really been proactive with everything that as I'm supposed to be. Because there was the aspect of, you know, the reality of it. Then the aspect of, well, if they're going to lock me up, you know, I'm already in trouble now. You know, so I had all these things going through my mind. And I just, you know, all the way up until now, I've just been riding away. I'm not hiding, not running. I just. Sir, how long have you been a truck driver? Almost two years. Okay. And do you. 
are you over the road or are you home every night? What is uh, that? Regional, where I'm, I was going to Missouri and back. Okay, so you're home how many times a week? Um, if I get lucky, because if I come back at a decent enough time, then I can park my truck and go home. But sometimes it don't work out like that. I sleep in my truck. All well, right, because you have so many hours you're allowed to drive, and then you have so many hours you have to rest and you have to shut down and all that. I understand that. Sometimes I get tired and don't make it. Okay. So but you are home. And so I understand that you're indicating you're the heaviest you've been. And you're indicating that's because of the driving. Yeah. Well, there are plenty of individuals that drive trucks that don't gain weight. They maintain their weight. And so some of that is obviously what you choose to eat or what have you. But, sir, you are here because you pled guilty to an amended charge of operating while visibly impaired, right? And one of your conditions of probation was to not use any alcohol or drugs, right? Unless prescribed. Yes. Okay. So you test a positive for marijuana. Yes. Can I add one more thing when I get when I get a chance? Okay. And then you failed to appear for your testing twice. Yes. Twice. I'm still not understanding what you're saying, the reason why you didn't show up on the 29th of August was for. Honestly, the day of court, you know, I was back and forth from here to probation. I spoke to her personally. She never said, make sure when you leave here, you go test. I said, sure face you, to face. Make sure you go test. No, I said, she never said that. That's what I'm saying. Sir, your responsibility every day is to call. For your caller, correct? I admit that I wasn't proactive the whole time, the whole month. It, sir, it's not even proactive. It's that's what you're required to do as a condition of probation. I understand that. I wasn't in a condition, you know. I, I, I don't know. What condition are you indicating that you were not in? I was mentally and physically in a, in a position where I was. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. I was mentally and physically not in the right state. Did you communicate that with Michelle? I did the day that we did the Zoom. That was the day that I explained everything to her. And you're right. I believe that was the same day originally on the first virus. So the 8th and the, and the uh, July and the Uh, on 8 8 and 7 25, he was here on that violation uh, when he requested a hearing to Mr. Shemby. Uh, and then I think that's the day he's talking about the Zoom. Is that correct? Um, when you had a different attorney representing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, I'm just now coming out of the whole dramatic experience. Uh, I know we're not on my time, but my, I'm here now. Like, I'm ready to cooperate and do what I gotta do. My mind is really just not here. I was really depressed and losing my job and everything. And my kids and just started school. My son is, I just really need to be on it before school starts because my kids need me right now. I don't really have no excuse. I guess well, it's not an excuse. So I guess a legitimate reason. He was here all day, uh, again, anticipating that depending on what uh, we did that he was looking at the 45 plus at least five 
Uh, he didn't shy away from that responsibility. Uh, in fact, we gave court notice that there would be no need for a hearing on that. Uh, this was a situation where had the court wanted to order him to test immediately, I'm sure he would test clean because he was here. I, I don't believe that uh, Mr. Carson is the type of person who's going to walk into a court to address issues, which he has always tried to admit. Uh, and I think that it could have been handled on the previous date, except for the distinctions between the uh, alcohol and the uh, marijuana. He has always been ready to step before this court and admit those, to those responsibilities, as well as to missing the first test. I think the second test was, yes, he didn't appear. It appears he was supposed to be there by when he called in. Uh, and I don't dispute that. Uh, however, it wasn't like he was avoiding something because he did not drink. Okay, but let me just back up for a moment. So, Mr. Carson, you stated that you didn't know that jail was an option, right? Right. Or at least, well, you knew, you just didn't think that it was possible. It was possible. Yeah. But given your criminal history, that is one of the reasons why the court did what it did because you have charges dating back all the way to 2008. And your most recent one was 2018. 2018, I was, I was incarcerated from 2017 to 2012. Well, so perhaps this was a matter that happened in 17 and the warrant came back in 18, I don't know, but. It was from Huron, felony police officer fleeing the leading fourth degree. Oh, yeah, that happened right before I got did my time. They took me on a rip to okay. handle that. Right. And you also have two active warrants. So, for all those reasons, the court, it was recommended that you not be placed on probation because the purpose of probation is to give you an opportunity to correct your behavior and learn from that based upon the rehabilitative factors. So given your criminal history and the fact that you were back in front of another court with yet another conviction is why probation wasn't recommended. However, I suspended your jail sentence and placed you on probation as well. And also indicated mandatory incarceration for any violation. And so here we are with three violations. So how can I not follow my own order? Um, I don't expect you to not to not. It's just um, what since since it was about what a month ago. July or June twenty first. No, well, hold on. No, it was originally set for June twenty first, but we adjourned it. So that you could get your affairs in order in case this court incarcerated you. And then it was set to be July 17th, and you did not appear. And then that must have been around the time of the accident, perhaps. And then we held the sentence on July 24th. So it's been about six, seven weeks. The day before my surgery. That's kind of part of the like um, bizarre aspect of it is that it happened so close to sentencing that I wasn't able to cooperate immediately and all those violations just happened as soon as I got sentenced because I was dealing with the aftermath of the accident right at the right after sentencing. It wasn't that I wasn't trying to comply. It's just that I was not in the state to physically good move. They were recommending me not to and I was on medication and pain medication then. And then, like I said, I mean, like I really was just literally depressed because I worked so hard to get to that point to establish that and get my CDL. I didn't want to move out of the bed. Sir, I can I can understand that. I can, but at the end of the day, this court's order is what it is. Yeah. And it happened so fast. 
that I didn't get to grip it. I didn't get to get a grasp of it. Honestly. Well, then maybe you're not a candidate for probation. Well, no, I, at the time I wasn't. No, that I'm, the reality didn't set in. And I'm not running my eye. You know, I'm ready to, I'm ready to be correct with it. Because um, honestly, I, I had to shake that off. Well, here's um here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to indicate on the violations from July 25th and August 8th, five days jail, continuing to complete all terms of probation. If you have probation violation fee. As to the violation for August 29th, the court's going to indicate you're continuing to complete all terms of, terms of probation, for the probation violation fee, and 10 additional days in jail. On the jail review, Would the court consider a, I'm assuming that we will have a immediate, uh, uh, not immediate sensing. I'm sorry, at least to report or when, does you, when do you want him to serve the total of 15 days? Today. Okay. Would the court then consider, instead of enforcing the jail review, uh, to put that out for another 45 or maybe two months? See how everything works once he gets out on the other uh, other on, the, on these sentences. I don't know if that makes sense. No, I didn't. Rather than the recommendation is to give him 45 days uh, jail, as well as an additional five and an additional ten. You uh, sentenced him to five days on violation. And sentenced him to an additional 10 days on the second violation. I believe, Your Honor, that that is going to fulfill some of his obligation, uh, obviously, to this court. Uh, I'm only asking rather than give him an additional 45 days on this year, uh, as part of his sentencing, that uh, that be put off to be concerned, to see how he completes his probationary period once he is released from the bank at jail. So let me just <clears throat> clarify that the 15 days jail is from the probation order that indicated mandatory jail for any violation. Correct. There is then, in addition to the probation, your client was sentenced to 45 days jail, Correct. which this court suspended. So the jail, the jail review was moved up from October 2nd to the violation hearing date because your client violated probation and therefore triggered the jail review to get moved up I for that purpose. That. And so you're asking this court to put it back to October 2nd? Well, I'm putting it back, Your Honor, to October 2nd so that we can review it at that time and be successfully now completing or continuing with his uh, probation. Uh, maybe the court will deem that the initial 45 days will not be necessary. That's the purpose of the jail review, correct? I mean, that's always been the purpose of a jail review. We're putting you on probation, you're going to, instead of just saying you get 45 days up front. Well, it's not, all, it's not always. I, mean, I, know, each case, I, know, I know. Each case has a has a different reason for it. And I understand, right? And I wasn't part of the sentencing. I wasn't part of, you know, this negotiations, between negotiations even in the beginning. That I'm not saying. I'm only indicating, Your Honor, that uh, rather than enforce your initial 45 days uh, 
And sometimes you can be 45 days up front and then you get a probation period. Uh, he's violated his terms and conditions of probation. He's admitted to those. So I question personally the, the additional 10 days needed for the violation on the 29th. That's my own opinion under those circumstances. Well, I can tell you why, counsel. Well, I understand because German. your client had two pending violations and then violated again. And your honor, I would agree, except for the fact that he was here in court. It wasn't something that he intentionally did, right? He didn't take the drug He intentionally test. didn't call. I understand that, sure. And that, for what matter, that didn't call. On the 29th. And that I understand, your honor. And he tried to explain it to you, knowing he was coming in here um, on that date, and to resolve the GL review with the recommendation that he was going to get an additional five days onto that. He was here ready to address that issue, expecting at least to be violated, correct? Yes. I'm only indicating, Your Honor, that I think that there was a, an explanation, a valid explanation, uh, and that the 10 days, I believe, that, that, that's the court's order. And I understand that's why I'm asking that we do not enforce the jail review for 45 days. So you're going to serve 15 days jail. You want to set this jail review to October 10th. I hope that you hear that name, Mr. Pardon? There is something uh, on September 11th that I'm supposed to, as part of my probation. So can we get that on on uh, record that if I'm incarcerated and I miss that, they don't violate me for missing that? What What is that on the 11th? Is that what force? I think, I don't know what it's on. It's three days and they say, do not miss. September 11th? Yeah. Oh, probably the chemical awareness program. So you have one on the 11th and then one on the 18th and then one on the 25th. Yeah. On Mondays. Okay. So I will um, make that note so that you can start the next the next one and you will get charged the reschedule fee. We'll turn this to October 10th at 9.45 a.m. For the, the jail review on the initial 45 days. We also, um, the probation is going to continue, sir, with those terms and conditions. All right, we want to go with the officer. Thank you, Ernest. Okay. All right, off the record. Mr. Whitman, is that Joe Review? 9.45. We're on here regarding. 